So let, let me start about the, the general situation of theater or performing arts community in Thailand so you get a sense of where we're coming from. Um, this is a country where art and especially contemporary art is not generally recognized by the state and the society at large. So you can see this clearly from uh, the government never really having art funding policy or art dedicated um, organization or they do have some things like that but they don't actually work for the arts per se but they work for something else that they understand as their own kind of art. art. Um, we don't have such structures as state theaters um, as you will find in more developed countries um, and art is usually value, performing arts and theater are usually value when it entertains, when it's profitable and with very uh, importantly when it's compliant to the state's value and I think we can really generally uh, categorize the kind of theaters we have in Thailand as uh, the traditional theater practices and we have commercial theaters so you know the musical Broadway like things and also independent theater which is the community which I'm uh, most closely related and deeply involved in and a contemporary theater um, activities in Thailand really began quite recently, I would say relatively began beginning in the 60s, where uh, that was when, you know, the, the, the democracy movement started to rise. And I think contemporary theater came to be part of that movement where, you know, you got lots of students educated in, in new ways and uh, theater become, has become one of the expression of that kind of um, ideology back then. Um, and up to these days, there are still very, very few professional theater companies. And by professional, I mean, you know, you have theater companies where you pay your members regularly or have repertoire-ish kind of productions. Um, so there's really just a handful of companies that have managed to do that. And most artists and practitioners in the theater scene in Bangkok have day jobs. So nobody actually works for art full time. That's a very rare thing in the country. And to BIPAM, which is what uh, my biggest responsibility at the moment, BIPAM actually began as part of the existing Bangkok Theatre Festival. So Bangkok Theatre Festival is happening very soon in, in Bangkok now. It happens every November. Uh, a yearly fringe-like kind of festival where all the uh, professional, um, ma mature, senior and, and amateur theater artists come together and just put on their work. So it's very fringe-like in nature. And um, so we start, BIPAM started as an international section to the Bangkok Theater Festival actually. But then after the first year, um, it has become now a dedicated international platform for performing arts in uh, dedicated to Southeast Asia networking and connecting the region to the world. And um, also as actually things, I think since COVID started, a lot of things are developing and changing and shifting almost daily. And I'm starting to see that BIPAM is probably going to become a Thai performing arts advocate as well. Be and this is because there is no such um, existing organization of this kind, meaning we don't have any artist alliance or, you know, arts council or union of any kind at all. So whenever there's any contact between the Thai performing arts scene and out and the outside world, um, some people now start to think of BIPAM. So I think we are taking up some advo advocacy work in BIPAM as well. The situation currently in Thailand is not so bad with the pandemic. We have had uh, zero new infected cases uh, for many months, at least uh, internally. I think we have new cases from people who, who migrated in through the borders and things like that. Um, the lockdown was official from March to May this year. And if we talk about the relief funds or any schemes for the arts, you know, uh, going back to what I explained about the, the, the situation of the arts in the country. So it's no surprise that there is no dedicated relief funds or scheme for the art specifically. 
what we did have was a general relief fund and very interesting and uh, funny, I think, is that it's, um, it's a general fund where it's, it's launched through a website that the government created. And if you want to get this relief fund, then you're competing with the whole nation in registering in time for the website and kind of sitting back in your house and guessing whether you're going to get the funds or not. You don't know why or why not your request may be approved. And the funds is actually very, very minimal. It's only 5,000 baht for three months. And that is not even a half, a half a month's rent for a lot of people. So, so that's the, the relief fund, the only relief fund that I can think of um, in the past months that we have in our country. So of course, there's no specific scheme for the arts. Um, any help that we did get from the government is actually initiated by the artists. So there's one online theater project. Uh, you will see this on the left of the screen in, in, the, in the green background. So that project is called Co With Us. And this is the Bangkok Theatre Network getting together to ask the Office of Contemporary Art and Culture whether together they could think of something to help the artists. And it comes, it becomes this um, project, which I, I don't completely admire, but at least, you know, it's better than nothing. You can see how the government likes to design their poster to look like, you know, gold and shiny and glimmering, which I don't think is very tasteful um, for artists, but um, that's kind of the thing that they decided to do in the end. Um, but then it's a little funny because um, the money that the artists got to make this project is already spent out, you know, making the videos, the online performances for the project and the budget was already minimal that the artists could not have anything left to sustain themselves, which is actually what they really needed during the lockdown, you know, because as I already said, that artists have day jobs, they had to survive. So when they couldn't do commercial events, they couldn't do commercial acting or commercial writing, everything stopped. They also lost, uh, you know, the sources of income and this kind of help that the government eventually agreed to give, I would say it didn't really help much, but then it did keep some movement in, on the goal, you know, so we have something rolling, but uh, does it really help? I, I think that's something to doubt actually. What's more interesting than Co With Us is the one poster on the right to that one. It's called In Own Space. This is an artist initiated um, project. It came out almost immediately after the official lockdown began. It started with uh, two young artists who really wanted to find out if there's if there's anything at all that they could do in the lockdown apart from just sitting at home and watching, you know, Netflix and all the videos. And so this is uh, kind of, this is a no budget uh, project, but then they involved a lot of artists to come together. And I think the task is actually very interesting because you have one artist making a short performance. The next artist has to watch this performance, take some elements from the first one, make their own performance that continues with the, the previous one and it goes like this, so on and so forth, until you know you complete the project with 15 different artists. It was quite successful in Bangkok that they had a second version that they passed the project on to university students. And then they had a third version where they uh, expanded the project to collaborate internationally with Japanese and Korean artists. So this is actually quite a successful independent project by, by the Bangkok artists. My last slide is about uh, strategy or survival. That's how I name it because the, um, the question is usually, you know, what would be the strategy for moving forward for BIPAM and for the theater community? And I would admit now, honestly, that our strategy is not so different than what we've always been doing, which is really to survive. <laughs> Um, we never really had a strong infrastructure to rely on to start with. So when COVID-19 hit, it was kind of just a bigger hit. So it's an extension to what we've already been struggling with, 
you know, things like limited resources and structural support. So we have this ability to adapt and to always deal with whatever comes in our face at any minute. So this would have, this would be our strategy. We can call that a strategy and we will continue to be living with this strategy to adapt, but it's nothing new. That's, that's my point. It's uh, something that we've always been using in trying to make some art and do something out there in the public. What COVID-19 has brought another thing is reprioritization. Um, especially within BIPAM team, we have discussed and uh, the core team has kind of agreed that we are looking more now for need-based and in-depth collaboration. So we are deprived of the privilege of, you know, that used to kind of be out there, you know. I think before COVID hit, we had this kind of several opportunities that's kind of floating in the air. You can kind of catch things anytime. There's many things to do. There's many possibilities, but now those possibilities are limited. Resources are very uh, limited and restricted. So there's no more just because. We can't do things just because we can anymore. If we are to do something, then we have to be able to justify and explain it to ourselves why we're doing something. And if it's, especially if it's going to involve another country, you know, now that traveling and communication has been much, much, much more limited than before, then it's all the more good reason that we should be able to justify with ourselves and our collaborator, collaborators first, why we want to do something. And, and then we can decide to go for it and not just, you know, just have some fun. It's not really available anymore. I'm sure that a lot of you have heard about the pro-democracy movements that are happening now in Thailand. Um, Bai Pam has been very uh, vocal about taking a clear stand in political situations in Bangkok. Um, artists, not just performing arts and theater artists, but artists of a lot of different disciplines come together and form a group called uh, Free Act. I also already shared a link of their Facebook page with Alba. So they formed this group to support pro-democracy movement with artistic activities. And um, I think this is a movement of artists going out there, being with the kind of audience or the kind of society that we want to see in the future. So we cannot anymore um, you know, walk away from the fact that if we want the society to change forward, those people, the youth that are out there, are the people who we want to be in connection with and we can't leave them now. You have to also get out on the street. That's where your audience or your public is. And I'm guessing that actually when, when all this turmoil uh, is over one day, hopefully not very far away, it might actually change um, the landscape of the audience that we have in the theater community. But that's kind of my speculation. I, I think that's yet to be seen in the future, but it probably will change who are the people who come to the theater and how we do theater in the future. Now we are in Taiwan and we might feel we recent, in recent years, we kind of uh, aware that, oh, we don't really know our neighbor countries, but countries from Southeast Asia and uh, so I wonder so we feel like oh what what a shame and we don't understand them uh, we are kind of uh, far away we assume that uh, countries we think Southeast Asia they are closer they understand each other they work together a lot is that true or because uh, my some of my <laughs> things that I get a little bit different so please share a little bit uh, unfortunately, it's not true. And I think that's, that's why when BIPAM started with this mission to unite Southeast Asia, it was pretty, a pretty great ambition because we're almost working against the current, not within the artist, artistic communities, but the, the current of what's already happening, the status quo of these uh, countries in Southeast Asia or ASEAN. In Thailand, for example, we have in our history textbooks in primary schools and secondary schools learning and memorizing that everybody around us is our enemy 
and you have this deeply instilled in the daily language that we use you know it used to be it used to be okay if you want to say somebody is like um, unfashionable and a little unsophisticated to call them Lao, just like that just like that so things like that is very deeply deeply ingrained in our consciousness and i think we would love to start changing that. I don't think we're going to change it completely, but I, we would love to be, you know, one of the contributing factor to changing that kind of perspective. And it has to start with learning about each other and valuing each other for what we, what we really are and not just what you memorize in your false textbooks and history books like that. Um, I think it's, we're, we're working on that and we're, 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 as we connect more to our neighbors, we're starting to see um, the deep pains, you know, underneath the current, the contemporary history of each country and trying to see that we share some things um, in common, you know, we share, <laughs> unfortunately, what Southeast Asian countries share is this history of pain and violence. Um, that's why we had this theme last year also. Um, and, and yeah, getting to know each other, knowing each other, not because you want to compete with them, but to feel more in alliance with each other. And I know that this is still a very ba baby beginning step. And that's why I think BIPAM is still on this mission to make these bonds and these relationships you know, knowing each other deeply, stronger and stronger. And once this is strong enough, then we can think of maybe doing something collectively with other communities too. I think the pain and the conflicts and the divisive kind of feeling is really deep in the in the in the region that that it's uh, it's going to take time to kind of you know patch things up and heal. Yeah.